Thank you, Chairman Bishop, Ranking Member Grijalva, and for the whole committee for the honor to appear before you at this important hearing. For 45 years, NEPA has served as the broadest and most diverse shield of environmental protection in the United States. Ranking Member, I agree with your statement that it really is the bedrock of environmental law. And it's probably realized more benefits per word of statutory text in the six pages than any other statute. But while it was enacted as a shield, it's also been transformed by some into a secondary purpose that was unintended by Congress, which is as a sword intended to block projects, delay projects, and cancel projects. And so what we want to talk about today is this balance focusing on NEPA being a shield to protect the environment, to assess greenhouse gases, assess climate change, and environmental impacts, but not furthering this secondary purpose that some have adopted to make it a sword that will block projects that are critically important to uh, our energy independence and modern energy infrastructure and the various goals that the Obama administration is pursuing to address climate change. And as NEPA is entering middle age, and there's been some discussion about how old NEPA is, I was born the same year NEPA was enacted, so I can fairly say it's middle age. Um, it is struggling to keep up with applying these older tools to address modern problems. And, and no example of that is, is better than climate change. Um, as the chairman pointed out, NEPA has not been amended since 1970, but we're asking it now to address greenhouse gases and climate change, like we're asking several other, other statutes to do. Um, NEPA was designed to address specific projects in specific areas and look at the local and regional impacts of those projects. As we know, climate change is a global issue. It's an issue where you have almost an infinite amount of sources around the world contributing to a single concern. And so that is not something that syncs up very well with NEPA. And so the question today is how do we go about reconciling these two things? I want to say at the outset, I am, in, I am in agreement with, I think, the two fundamental principles that the director has shared and that the guidance does. I, I do agree that an analysis of greenhouse gases is appropriate under NEPA for certain projects that do impact greenhouse gases. I don't dispute that. That's, what the courts have, that's where the courts have been going and what they've been saying. And I also do recognize the importance of guidance. I, I think it can be helpful to the decision makers, to the courts, to the stakeholders to get guidance from CEQ, appropriate guidance on how to look at this kind of 1970s tool and how it should be addressing the modern concerns associated with co climate change. So I'm in agreement on those two issues. But as I say in my written testimony, I, I do think there's five ways that the guidance gets it wrong and should be doing it better. And I'm not going to go through all five in the brief time here, but I do want to focus on the first three. And, and the first one, importantly, is how the guidance goes beyond CEQ's own regulations. CEQ's regulations requires an analysis of direct, indirect, and cumulative impacts. But the guidance goes much further than that. It says beyond those, you have to consider all the upstream impacts of a decision and all the downstream impacts of the decision. And it gives an example of a mine and says you not only have to look at the impacts of a mine. I agree, we should look at the greenhouse gas impacts of that mine. But you have to go all the way downstream to look at the transportation of the resources, the refining of the resources, the ultimate combustion or utilization of the resources. And that goes far beyond the CEQ regulations. And you can't amend a regulation with a guidance. I was interested to read the director's testimony, where on page four, uh, there's, there's more that I, I agree with there than I did in the actual guidance, and maybe there's some refinement going on which would be welcomed. The, the second fundamental issue I want to raise has to do with the CEQs applying a one-size-fits-all guidance to all types of decisions, land decisions, resource decisions. Encompassing this guidance are forestry decisions, grazing decisions, oil and gas permits, export terminals, railroad spurs, highways and bridges and things like that. And for something like climate change, we simply can't have a one-size-fits-all guidance that applies to all those actions. That's just going to lead to confusion, unnecessary interpretation, uh, litigation risk delays, and the, again, the, the potential to frustrate these very important projects that are key to our energy independence and a modern energy infrastructure. I think what CEQ should do, and, and with respect, would be to develop guidance that's specific for these sectors as opposed to a one-size-fits-all approach, which is misleading. And then the third thing I wanted to emphasize is the reliance on the social cost of carbon. At the outset, I'm not sure why the social cost of carbon is even relevant under the law to this, but even if, if you were to engage in some social cost of carbon analysis, by no means should they be relying on the OMB social cost of carbon. Um, the OMB social cost of carbon metrics, I, I think, are probably the single least transparent um, decision making in the environmental area in this administration. It is the antithesis of NEPA that a bunch of agencies kind of behind closed doors in a black box develop these figures without any public participation 
and input, and it goes against everything NEPA stands for when it comes to public participation. So um, the social cost of carbon should not be referred to in the NEPA analysis. The other arguments are, the other positions are in the written testimony, but with respect, in, in just 10 seconds, I do want to repeat the, the Bishop's, uh, I'm sorry, Chairman Bishop's statement that I do believe in the interim that the guidance should be withdrawn while these concerns are addressed. Even though it is a draft guidance, it is, other federal agencies, even the courts, look to anything CEQ says with significant deference, and so it is having an impact in the short term. And so I, I would recommend and request that the guidance be withdrawn while these issues are addressed and these other guidances are developed.